How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to Rangers Rundown. A fun game to watch, to be sure, but a disappointing ending. Lundqvist's first NHL game, which was nice to see. Uh, Blay apparently has a lower body injury, so he was not in the lineup tonight. And before the game started, they did a tribute to Rod Gilbert, who passed away earlier this year. It was a nice video montage, a bunch of testimonials from people that he played with. And then his wife uh, came out and dropped the, the puck uh, for the, the opening ceremony, which was nice to see. And his whole family was there. They zoomed in on him. The crowd was cheering for him. They wore his jersey for uh, the pregame skate. And uh, it was just a nice little kind of send-off for, for Rod Gilbert. Lineup tonight, uh, top line, Lafreniere, Zibanejad, Kreider, Panarin, Shrum, Kako, Gauthier, Hedl, Goudreau, and then Hunt, Rooney, and Reeves for that fourth line. Lindgren, Fox, Miller, Truba, Nemeth, Lundqvist are your three D pairs. And then Chesterkin in the net. Uh, like I said yesterday, figured they were... When we didn't see him yesterday in the game, figured they were saving him for the home opener, and turns out to be true. And he played pretty well tonight. Uh, first period, two icings in the first minute from Dallas. So it, it took a minute for the teams to kind of gel and kind of get going. For the Rangers, that lasted the whole first period. It took them almost an entire period to finally get their legs going. 157, Shesterkin uh, blocked the puck and it went straight up in the air. He lost it and it landed right in front of him in the blue paint. Luckily, he was able to cover it and nothing happened. But it was just a, one of those freak things where it just bounced straight up, came straight down. Easily could have been knocked in off of anybody around the net. Luckily, it didn't. 331, Sagan pushes Lafreniere into Klingberg, who then subsequently falls into Kreider and lands kind of awkwardly on his leg. Klingberg would go to the locker room. He would come back later in the game, but he did go to the locker room for a little bit to get checked out. Uh, shortly after that, Strom had a good chance, and then Hintz had a good chance, but Shesterkin came up with a really good save. At 6.16, Sagan uh, puts the puck over the glass for delay of game, and Lundqvist was on the second power play unit, which was nice to see him getting a little bit of power play time tonight. There was a shorthanded chance at the end of that power play, though, but Shesterkin made a good save. And it was at this point that I noticed Shesterkin is far better playing the puck than Georgiev is. I know yesterday in the, the rundown I talked about how I was very nervous whenever Georgiev touched the puck because he doesn't seem to be very good at handling it. Shesterkin, complete opposite. When Shesterkin touches the puck, I don't feel nervous at all, and he showed that tonight. He was pretty good with the puck. Uh, halfway through the period, Klingberg is back, so checked him out. He was fine. Uh, Lafreniere had a takeaway near the net and had a pretty good chance, although it would not go in. 12.35, Strom gets called for slashing. It was an offensive zone penalty, and you hate to see those. The penalty kill started strong, but the last 30 seconds of that penalty kill, the Stars were starting to get some momentum going, and I was getting nervous they were going to score. And then towards the end of the period, 1925, Peterson would score his first NHL goal. So this is back-to-back -back games where a player scores their first NHL goal against the Rangers. So congratulations to Peterson. Lundqvist was caught flat-footed. Peterson got past him, his backhand under the arm. Pretty good shot. Only four shots on goal for the Rangers in that first period. They were just getting stopped at the blue line way too often. Now Dallas is... A very good defensive team. They um, they said that last year Dallas was the best defensive team that didn't make the playoffs. And they showed that tonight. Dallas did play pretty well defensively, at least in that first period. Um, not a lot of sustained pressure for the Rangers. Um, but something else I noticed, Dallas was generating a lot of shots on goal in the first period, but most of them were completely missing the net. Now, this was Dallas's first game of the season, and they did hold on to a lot of players throughout their preseason games that were eventually sent down to the minors. So, could have been a combination of it's their first game of the season, and some of the veterans on the team didn't play as much as maybe they wanted to in the preseason. Probably a combination of those two things. But we move on to the second period. Goudreau moved up to the first line. Lafreniere wasn't on the bench to start the second period, but he would come back. 
Good early save by Shesterkin, so he's staying hot in the net. 123, Kako rings one off the post, and it was one of those where you half jump out of your seat because you think it's going in, rang it right off the post. 228, Hock and Pa, delay of game. This would be first of two penalties that he would take that period. Um, Reeves was coming down on him. There was an impending hit, and Hock and Pa just throws it right over the glass. Second delay of game penalty for Dallas uh, in this game. Zibanejad misses the net by inches on a deflection during that power play. And then Lafreniere is back for the second power play unit, so he didn't miss that much time early in the second period. Five minutes in, Reeves, Truba, and Ben. All three of those players get roughing minors. So Dallas gets a power play with three people in the box. Uh, Reeves hit a Dallas player. I'm for blanking on who he hit, but he hit a Dallas player awkwardly into the wall right in front of the bench. Scrums ensue. Truba roughs somebody up. Ben roughs somebody up. The three of them go to the bench. Shesterkin's making great saves at this point, but as I was writing that down in my notes, Shesterkin is making great saves. Foxa would score a power play goal at 6-11, putting Dallas up 2 to nothing. And it's at this point I'm getting worried that we're just going to see a repeat of last night and the Rangers are going to get smoked. 6.34, Holpe completely robbed Strom. Strom had, was in front. It, like, it fooled everyone. It fooled everyone in the stadium. It fooled the announcers. Holpe just completely robbed him. But two minutes later, Fox would score a goal for the Rangers. Rangers had a couple of chances right before Fox scored, but he deflected. It was a point shot for him, deflected it off of Lindell's foot, so it was an own goal for Lindell. Whoops, those happen. But Fox would get the Rangers on the board and make it 2-1. And after that, it was the Rangers period. Once Fox scored that goal, Dallas was barely in the offensive zone. Rangers controlled that period almost completely. 940 Hunt had a breakaway. Uh, Truba had a big hit on Radulov to get the puck, and he set up Hunt for a nice breakaway. Wouldn't go in, but keep putting the pressure on. Halfway through the second period, Rangers already have eight shots. Now, the Rangers only had four shots in the entire first period. Halfway through the second, they already had another eight, which was really nice to see. Dallas gets a little bit of sustained pressure towards the middle of that period, but the Rangers would squash that and put the pressure right back on them. Fox leading the way. He's continuing his Norris-level play, and he's already got a couple points in the first two games. 15-54, Kreider would score a goal. It was a Miller point shot and Kreider deflection. He's doing exactly what Kreider does. He's hanging around the five feet in front of the net looking for those deflections. He's just so good at it, and he showed why he's so good at it tonight tying the game 2-2 two to two, uh, towards the end of that second period. So the Rangers come back from being down two goals to tie it 2-2. Two to two. After that, the Rangers just keep the pressure on, nonstop pressure, cycling the puck, keeping it in the zone, doing a really good job of keeping it away from Dallas, something that they did not do well in the first period. 1843, Hockenpah would take his second penalty of the period, a holding call. Uh, constant pressure just in the there uh, in the offensive zone for the Rangers. You're bound to draw a penalty when that happens, and sure enough, it did. Uh, their power play wouldn't score in the end of that second period, but the power play would move over into the third period. There was probably five or six minutes in that second period where Dallas didn't touch the offensive zone. They would get it out into the neutral zone every now and then, but the Rangers would just get it right back in to their offensive zone. It was real it was a clinic on how to keep pressure in the offensive zone. It was really nice to see. Uh, they outshot Dallas 18 to 8 just in that second period. The Rangers generated 18 shots in one period. Third period, nothing comes up from their brief power play to start that held over from the second. First four minutes, good pressure is continuing, a couple good chances, not as much pressure as they had sustained in the second period, but still keeping the puck to themselves. 534, a scrum around Holpe. Um, his own player stick comes up, knocks him in the head, mask comes off, Holpe crashes down. But he would stay in the game for a little bit longer, at least around 7 minutes, 30 seconds into that third period. 
Dallas gets some pressure, a couple of shots, but Shesterkin held strong. Then at 8.07, Hudobin would come in to replace Holpe. Holpe would go to the locker room. He would stay out for the rest of the game. Uh, and we didn't know what exactly was the problem. If it was upper body, lower body, we're not sure. Uh, 13.22, Pavelski would take a cross-checking penalty. He cross-checked Fox right in the head. Probably an accident, but you're still going to get called. Uh, Rangers would take a timeout about 45 seconds into that power play probably just to give the guys a rest, give them a chance to regroup, get back out there and try and win the game. Pavelski comes out of the box at the end of that penalty and just flips it right off the crossbar. Jamie Benn was behind it and he throws his hand up. He, he thought it went in, but it bounced off the crossbar. Even I was scared it went in, but it did not. And then in the last minute, Dallas had a couple of shots that were close to ending the game within the last minute, which would have just been super annoying and devastating. Luckily, it didn't go in, so we move to overtime. So the Rangers get their first point of the season, making it to overtime. And then, of course, a minute and 38 seconds into overtime, Haskinen would score a goal, cementing the win for the Dallas, their first game of the season, and they start the season off with a win. Rangers losing in overtime, disappointing, but they do get the point, so their record over two games is 0-1-1. Shots 33 to 26 in favor of the Rangers. So they go from not really shooting that much in the first period to just completely eclipsing the Dallas Stars over the following two periods. Faceoff percentage, Rangers barely squeak over 50% for that, but again, faceoffs. You can care about them if you want. It's not a total indication of whether or not a team's going to win. Uh, power play went 0 for 4. So power play looked good. It, it looked good. They kept cycling. They had their chances. They had a lot of really close calls. It was a combination of not finishing and just Holpe and Hudovin standing on their heads for Dallas. Uh, hits 32 to 23 in favor of the Rangers. The Rangers hit a lot tonight. And blocks 13 to 25 in favor of Dallas. So Dallas was blocking a lot of Rangers shots. Rangers were hitting a lot of Dallas players. Overall, am I disappointed they lost? Of course. I'm always going to be disappointed when the Rangers lose. They get a point out of it, which is not bad. That's one point out of a possible four in the first two games. Not exactly the start we want for the Rangers. There's a lot of young kids on this team. And there's a lot of new players, and everybody is new to this system that Gallant is putting into place. So again, I'm giving the Rangers a cushion at the beginning of the season to make the mistakes, to learn from them, and really cement themselves into something. We've had two different enough lineups in back-to-back -back games, so nothing really to cement. Should the top six be scoring a little more? Yeah, maybe. But again, it's early enough in the season where we shouldn't be going crazy yet. Just be thankful they got a point out of it. Shame they couldn't win their home opener. But they're back in action in two nights, Saturday against Montreal up in Montreal. So the Rangers go on, I think it's a five-game road trip right now before they come back to MSG. So hopefully the Rangers play well on the road. The trivia question of the night, who is the youngest European-born defenseman to make their Rangers debut? Because Lundqvist made his Rangers debut tonight at the age of 21, but there was somebody younger than Lundqvist who was European-born defenseman to make their Rangers debut, and I will give you a second if you want to think about it. I didn't know the answer. I rarely do know the answers to these questions. But it was Fedor Tutin who was 20 years old when he debuted for the Rangers. So the Rangers will be back in action, like I said, Saturday night in Montreal. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next rundown.